Hello everybody, I'm Dave Lamont with Michael Wolf, coming to you from beautiful Biscayne Bay in Miami, Florida. And this is Hover World. I'm Dave Lamont. And I'm Michael Wolf. And that was an incredible yeah, ride, Dave. Fantastic. We have to tip our driver, Guillermo. <laughs> Quite more than we have, probably. <laughs> We're out here in the middle of beautiful Biscayne Bay to introduce Americans to the exhilaration of hovercraft flying. Popular for many years in Europe and Australia. And probably many of you don't know that there's been organized racing right here in the U.S. for over 15 years. Well, for the first time on American television, this is is Hoverworld, and we're going to be showing everybody the amazing versatility of these incredible hovercraft. From the 10 annual point event races here in the U.S. to races in Great Britain, Japan, and Australia. We may also get to see a hovercraft perform a daring rescue mission, and we'll get to see a hovercraft shoot the rapids, but go upstream. We're going to visit lots of exotic places together and probably do some pretty crazy things. And we're going to go behind the scenes at a hovercraft factory in Miami, and you'll get to meet the racing world's finest hovercraft pilots. Today, we're following Team Scat on the road to the Miami River in Troy, Ohio for the Hover Club of America's National Championship races. And we'll do that after this. We're back. 
on the road with Team Scat from Miami, Florida to Troy, Ohio on the banks of the Miami River. Here in the pits, the racers are unloading their craft and tuning them up for a day of racing excitement. Crowds are already beginning to arrive here in Troy, and we expect to see over 150,000 people here today. Let's take a look at the racing course. The course is comprised of both land and water segments. The start finish line on land, out transition one and over the water, down the straightaway to the hairpin turn, and water to land transition two, usually an airborne transition, and then around the land segment, then back down river to the S turns and transition four and to the start finish line. Today we're racing a seven lap three heat meet. Now the hovercraft are divided into three classifications. Formula S, a single engine, unlimited size, requires a single fan under 31.4 inches and a single duct. Formula 2, less powerful, the engines are limited to 250 to 500 cc's, but there are no limitations on the craft. Formula 1, here's where we really see head-to-head -head battles between the home built and the factory machines. Single fans, dual fans, engines over 500 cc's, anything goes. Here are the results with Formula 2 after the previous day's racing. Bob Wint is in first place, a perfect two for two with 40 points. You get 20 points for a win. Tied for second, we have Bill Mad Dog Martin and Craig Throttleman Throssel, 34 points each. I think their nicknames will tell you about their particular styles of racing. And Ron Molina holding down fourth with a consistent 28 points, a couple of fourth place finishes for Molina. And Wint, Michael, is in a home-built craft while the others are factory-built. Right, we'll see in Wint's craft later on that it's a single-engine craft, but a unique design running two fans. They're about ready to get going here at Troy, Ohio on the Miami River. We'll start this on land, of course, and we'll watch to see if Bob Wynn can go three for three and wrap this up, and there they go. Here they go, picking up on the uh, bubble now and moving out. Wild Bill Martin in a black and orange craft. It looks like Wint has taken the early lead, number 33, the Universal Hovercraft. It's a home build, as we've talked about before, in an unusual design. And they spin out now over the Miami River. That first transition is complete, as the hovercraft can easily go from water to land and vice versa without any trouble at all. Now it looks like the Wild Bill Martin has taken the early lead. And there's that first transition. You see him getting a little airborne there. The hovercraft, there is nothing underneath. And I don't think we can emphasize that enough. That's air that's got them underneath there. A lot of people are confused. They think it's wheels. They think there's something going on there. But they make that first spin. We're about ready to go back onto the water, holding down second place right now. Looks like Throttle Man Throssel, and it's Wild Bill Martin, though, with a pretty good lead. And I wanted to point out once again, as these craft come around, the importance we spoke earlier with Ron Molina about how these racers are using their bodies to help dig in that craft a little bit and keep it dug into the water while it's making that turn. Martin in front, we have Throssel second. You can see Bob Wintop of your screen now in third place. Also in this race, Ron Molina, rescue Rick Senda, who's considered a factor in the Formula 2 circuit. There you see a good tight shot of the hovercraft in action and how the body English is very, very important as they make the tight turns. If you go too far outside, you're in trouble. You see the craft swinging around here and using the craft's thrust from behind to help change that direction. Nice yeah. tight turn there. Very tight turn, and that's very important, particularly if you happen to get into a battle with somebody. But right now, it's Wild Bill Martin on top, number two points leader in the Formula 2 and in the nation. And here we are, back up on the land again. Nice little jump up onto the beach there. Bob Wynn making a move now on second place and Throttle Man Throssel. Those two have been going at it, and it looks like Wynn is about to pass him here. But right now, nobody is threatening Wild Bill Martin. Also a nickname of Mad Dog, so I would guess he got that from a fairly open throttle style of racing. You can see a nice, uh, nice loud crowd of onlookers there in the background. Back on the water now. Here comes Bob Wint moving in. And it looks like, oh wait, Wint's uh -oh. dying out on us here, Michael. Looks like Bob Wint may be in some kind of trouble. You can see he's trying to get his craft going again. And just as he was making a move on Martin, who now loses some of that competition, and it appears that Wint is struggling a little, but he is catching up. Looks like he's dropping out of the picture now, though, Dave. We lost him for a little bit. It looked like you could see his craft begin to struggle, but now he is not only not struggling, but putting a big move on Martin. But there there's one thing we need to point out. The fans who are used to auto racing, where it's all aerodynamics and all get on a guy's bumper and ride him to death, that doesn't work here. You'll find that one of the big disadvantages when you're in a, a real tight one and two situation like this, when you cross behind one of these other races, oh, there's a nice Bob move Wynn there. right there, just passed him as he went to the outside and got the move on Mad Dog Martin. And now Bob Wynn opening up a lead here on the Miami River. 
as he gets ready to work through some of the turns. Nice tight turn. Now, now watch this side slip. And once again, we're talking about the racer's body. And Rasheem leaning over there. That's how he's helping control the craft with not just the throttle and the and the blades in the back. He's using his body weight to help control that craft. And there's a good picture of you can see that front fan that's helped that that provides the lift for his craft. Very much different from the other craft who are behind him. Craig Throssell in the blue and. While Bill Martin and now Throssell and Martin getting into a battle for second and third place as Bob Wint is leading this Formula 2 race. And right there in that turn, you can see one of those examples of getting caught in the thrust from being too close behind one of the other racers. We see leader Bob Wint has opened up a comfortable lead and again from a point where we thought we had lost him mechanically. And now we have lost oh, him mechanically. No. Hand in the air to indicate he's got a problem. And this time it appears to be for real. Bob Wint is standing up in the craft. And now we're going to see who's going to come over taking first, whether it'll be Martin or Throssell, as Wint has got some sort of a problem there. I can't exactly tell what it is. Now, you see, once again, see the craft sit down. He's not up on the air bubble anymore. We got to stress to folks who aren't familiar with hovercraft that there's nothing underneath this craft but a bubble of air inside that skirt. And the new race leader is Bill Martin. He's taken over from Craig Throssell, who you see in the picture there. But Martin did make the first transition. We should be having him here in a moment. It's Throssell and Martin now taking over for Bob Wint, who had an unfortunate occurrence here. Bob Wint trying to sweep this Formula 2 series here in Ohio, but he can't do it. And there is Martin now as he and Throssell will battle it out as we try to figure out if Bob Wint will be able to get back in this race. Making another nice transition from the land into the water and headed down toward that turn. And we'll be back with the conclusion of this Formula 2 battle between Martin and Throssell on Hover World. Back on Hover World, Formula 2 action on the Miami River in Troy, Ohio. I'm Dave Lamont along with Michael Wolf. And Michael, we found out during the break that Bob Wint is in a bit of trouble in this race. Incredible bad luck for Bob. Not only did he have problems with his craft early on in the race, but now we've learned that Bob missed one of these buoys. You're looking right here at this red buoy in the water. He missed it, did not go back up and pick it up. So that's cost him a lap, Dave. All right, Bill Martin is still the leader. Bill Mad Dog Martin and Craig Throttleman Throssell, two of the more all out. There you see Bob Wint now, but he is a lap down. He had been leading this race, but we found out earlier about that penalty that uh, Michael just described to you. So pretty much it's going to be Martin and Throssell now battling it out for the lead. Rick Sanda is still in contention, and so is Ron Crash Molina. But it's Martin and Throssell, and they've been around each other this whole race. Yeah, I should mention now, while we're watching these craft in this long straightaway, that these Formula 2s are capable of hitting 50 miles per hour during that straight stretch. There is a water-to-land transition that the hovercraft can make so smoothly, unless you get caught right behind one of them, then it makes it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more hairy, as we see Bill Martin, who previously has finished second and third, so he's been around the lead the whole time. Bob Wint had won the first two of these three races. They're going seven laps here, and we're getting near the finish. And it's just amazing watching the control these flyers have over these craft. You watched how tight that turn was swinging out the tail on that craft and using the thruff, thrust from it to keep it right that nose right in there on the turn. And there you see also from Martin and Throssell a good example of how to pass those buoys and the thing that Bob Wynn failed to do. So again if you pass the buoy the wrong way you got to go back. If you don't go back you're penalized and that's Bob Wynn there in third place but not in third place in the race. You see him third overall but he is behind. Nice job there by Martin on the transition as they get near that bridge that Ron Crash Molina knows uh, <laughs> a little too well. Quite possibly, I understand it cost him a cracked helmet. Fortunately, that was about it. Well, hovercraft, very, very safe racing. This is not a, a, a sport with a lot of disaster in its history. And this, this is amazing to watch this, watch them swinging them around. They've already picked their direction. They're coming up on the shore. And this is a home built. Looks like a much larger craft, and you can see the cost that that extracts when he swings into those turns. It's an awkward looking thing, but Bob Wood done a fine job of keeping control on it. Right now, it's still Martin in front in an orange and blue craft. You're looking at Throssell and Wint right here. Throssell in the blue, Wint in the much larger craft, and he's trying not to get caught behind that thrust. If he does, he's history, and he passes Throssell. So Bob Wint making an effort at it here anyway. He did win the first two races and has a lot going for him. Well, here we go turning into this next transition from the water back onto the land. Little jockeying for position there. Yeah, wind is cut in front of Throssell again. We're also now seeing some of the slower craft being lapped here as we get near the end of this seven lap race, the third in the Formula 2. And it looks like Wind has dunked out again. again, his second mechanical problem. And here's somebody wrestling with one of those turns right there. And you, now you can see in the grass, you can watch the blast from those props. So you've got to realize you've got a couple of hundred pounds of force of air coming out of those, those uh, vents in the back. And that's really keeping some of the racers from getting too close to some of the others, the ones right. ahead should point out that blue craft there you see there is Craig Throssell just now getting into your picture in second place it is still Mad Dog Martin in first that blue craft he passed was not Throssell so Martin has not lapped Throssell at all it's been a close battle even when Wint was leading these two guys were almost attached to each other what we're watching here is we're starting to watch the leaders start to lap some of the slower racers 
Getting it around a near 50 miles an hour. Now go through a couple of turns here, getting ready to make another transition very shortly on to land as it's Bill Martin and Craig Throssell. We're also going to have action in Formula S and Formula One, and we'll see perhaps one of the top drivers in the country, Super D, Dennis Miller, a little bit later on. Dave, here's a good shot you can see in this particular craft that's had a lot of them replaced. Those segmented bags that are part of the, uh, the skirt that runs around the hovercraft, those bags direct the air down beneath the hovercraft and help support it. There's the checkered flag, and it's going to go to Bill Mad Dog Martin, the winner of the third and final of the Formula 2 races. Mad Dog Martin is the winner. Craig Thrussell is taking second place, and Martin celebrating his victory here on the Miami River in Troy, Ohio. And the victory gives Bill Martin 20 points, and we'll see in a second how important that is to him. Craig Throssell finishing second. Third place went to Rick Sanda. Fourth place, Ron Molina. Chris Fitzgerald was fifth, and way down in sixth. Only 10 points for Bob Wint because of that one lap penalty. And how painful was that penalty for Wint? That's how painful. He finishes in third in the meet overall. Four behind Mad Dog Martin. Craig Throssell takes second, and a very steady Ron Molina finishing in fourth place. So Bob Wint missed the meet when he missed the boot. And the national point champ in Formula 2 is Craig Throttleman Throssell. He's finishing with 431 points. Mad Dog Bill Martin with 390 and Ron Molina finished third overall. Coming up, Formula 1 action, unlimited horsepower and anything goes designs. It's all ahead on Hover World. We're back in Troy, Ohio on the Miami River and it's time for Formula One action to wrap it up as you see the racers getting a little, a little, a little workout for little the crowd. A little fun of the part here. of Spiny Bedsworth there doing some 360s. Let's check the standings after Formula One. Super D Dennis Miller with a second place and a first place for 38 points. Kevin Spiny Bedsworth 32. Guillermo Novillo with a steady finish for 30 points. In fourth place Bob went with 25. What the standings don't show is Chris Brzezinski who was the winner of the first race had a problem in the second race. And you watch that craft go, go over, and unfortunately, boing, there goes the prop. That was the end of that hovercraft for the day. So Chris Barzinski, who is not in a factory-built craft, he is a home build, and we'll see what happens as we get Dennis Miller taking the early lead as we're underway in this Formula One race, and these, Michael, are some pretty powerful craft. This is the unlimited class, Dave. Unlimited everything. It's home built versus the factory machines. We can see anything goes here. And we've Single got fans. Uh, some problems early oh. for Guillermo Lovillo in the back, and I believe Bob Wint is in a little bit of trouble also. He recognized his craft from earlier, so we're off to kind of a sloppy start here mechanically. Nobody hurt. Everybody appears to be all right. But Bob Wint, and there's Novillo just stuck there in the, right now on the Miami River as Wint appears to get it going again, but Novillo's in trouble, and he's had a pretty eventful uh, couple of races here. There goes uh, Chris Barzinski getting back into it. You can see the uh, disadvantage of those large, large prop machines with the single skirts, how wide they swing out on those turns. And, uh, and speaking of those large props, that's one of the things in this unlimited class. We're seeing Chris run a 50-inch prop here versus about a 31-inch prop on some of these factory machines. And here's a sight we're used to seeing. Super D, Dennis Miller out in front and driving very smoothly around those boys here on the Miami River in Troy where an outstanding crowd has come out as part of that city's strawberry festival also to be here to see the hovercraft pilots. Dave, let me catch up on what happened now to uh, Novio. He had trouble with that pull cord at the very beginning of the race. He had it, what we just saw a few minutes ago. His engine died. He had to get it cranked again. He's been wrapping that starter cord by hand and yanking mm -hmm. it. And he's back in the race now. All right, that's Kevin Spiney Bedsworth there. Somebody, uh, we have to differentiate between he and Guillermo because their craft do look a lot alike and they're both very aggressive racers but that is Dennis Miller and we saw Craig Barz Chris Barzinski rather come up on that transition where he had an accident before I'm sure he's got to be thinking about that nice little airborne jump there as they come up and you can see this is once again the larger craft these are unlimited horsepower 500 cc's and up so these things are really moving here and another major difference between the two craft as you can see is Barzinski is moving a little bit closer now trying not to get caught behind and that looks like Guillermo Novillo to me the flapping skirts the uh, everything goes attitude that he has on the race a big difference in the craft Michael between Barzinski and Miller the skirts we can also here see the front of these craft with another fan up front, another engine up front. That's providing the lift on these home-built craft. You just see three of them going by right there. Some of the other racers we should mention also in this race, Bob Wint is in this, Craig Throssell, Bill Martin, Terry Chapman, Ron Molina, and Alvin Barber completing the field here in this Formula One race in Troy, Ohio. 
on the hover world. Super D, Dennis Miller with that Super D tattooed right on the front of his uh, scat hovercraft. Uh-huh. Looks like he's running a little wide on some of these turns. That was a nice tight run right there coming up on the shore and right on his tail. There's Chris Barzinski again. He looks determined. He's got a smile on his face. I'm catching Super D. Well, I tell you what, if Barzinski gets that monster machine out in front and makes Dennis Miller eat air, it's going to be very hard Absol for Dennis to pass it. Absolutely. With that huge engine and that 50-inch prop really blowing some serious thrust behind him, it's going to make for some big problems for Dennis. You can see Barzinski making a pretty strong move on the straightaway here also to get ready for another water the land transition. Barzinski racing very mm -hmm. aggressively with that big machine. He does. He throws that thing around nicely. You can see a little bit slow when he first hits the land, but as soon as he gets on it, he seems to be making up a little bit of ground again on Miller. As you can see them both in your picture, and Super D having a little bit of trouble uh, there. Barzinski also goes there? a little bit too wide, Swing and he missed wide. an opportunity there. Here we go. We're back in the water again now. Heading for that first set of turns. And Dennis gets it a little bit wide there. Barzinski much tighter. He might have an opportunity here to make a move for first place. Uh, looks... Super D still got him by a little bit, but I tell you what, that kind of racing is not going to win him this, me this heat. Well, here's a straightaway, and here's where speed really counts. And now look how wide Dennis is. Barzinski has him. Oh, boy. Barzinski passed him. Super D just, I have to be honest, a little bit sloppy there. Barzinski racing very determined, has taken over the lead as they go through the boys. And remember, you can't go over him. you got to go around him. And now Super D with a tight turn, but it's Barzinski. And now he definitely has the advantage with that big prop Absolutely. behind Absolutely. Now, you can, you can see the blast, the water, the, uh, the spray coming out from behind them. Now, Dennis is running right into that every time he crosses them. Here we go back. Nice transition back into the water. And look at the acceleration. He's really going now. And we're looking at uh, 60 miles per hour or so plus on these straightaways with these big machines. These are the 500 cc or larger. Pretty much it's like watching an unlimited heavyweight wrestling match in the Olympics. These are the big boys, the sumo wrestlers of hovercrafting, if you will, as they hit from the water to land transition again. Barzinski and Miller, we now have Guillermo who's moved up to third place doing a fine job fighting it out with Kevin Spiney Bedsworth here. And those two seem to be locked. It keeps surprising me, though. I keep seeing Dennis swinging wide on these turns, and it's not uh, characteristic of the way this man races. I think he's just racing conservatively. But again, let's face it, he's in a fine spot to win the national championship. You come out of the three major categories with two national titles, and you've got quite a bit to be proud of. An appreciative crowd on hand here in Troy, Ohio, the Miami River, side of the national championships of hovercrafting. A nice day, nice flat water, and uh, Barzinski really, really moving on those straightaways. Moving it on the air. Nothing underneath those hovercrafts but air. Good tight turns there by, and again, you see Miller a little bit wider, just a little bit more conservatively, I guess, although it doesn't probably didn't feel too good physically to eat air <laughs> that much power. Still, and finishing second will be fine for him as Barzinski gets ready for that transition that cost him yesterday. Here's a good opportunity, Dave, as we see these craft come around. You can see the segmented skirt on Dennis's craft there with the, uh, the separate little means of, cha of channeling the air underneath the hovercraft. You look at the yellow skirt around Chris's craft in the lead. Now, it's a single-piece skirt directing all the air underneath his craft. If, it, if that gets ripped, if that gets torn, he loses that air bubble underneath his craft. So that's that's one of the risks some of these home builders risk with their craft. Yeah, again, there's a big difference between the home build and the factory build, and you can just see that the major differences here are obvious to the naked eye as there's the green flag. Still a little bit of time left in this seven-lap race, the final race in the Formula One for this season, and Super D Dennis Miller in second place, trailing Chris Barzinski and Super D on his way, apparently, to the Formula One National Championship. Moving back into the water now. Headed into another set of turns. And they're both getting a little bit wide there. And uh, you've got to be a little bit tired also in this point of the race. And again, because you're doing all of the work, you're doing all the body English, and it's going to be a little bit tiring for you. They've got pretty much a two-man battle going on here. Guillermo Novillo is in third place. We've got Kevin Spiney Bedworth holding down fourth. And fifth place uh, belongs right now to Terry Chapman who had problems in the first race and did not finish, but has come back and raced well since then. And we've got some spectators up here on the bridge getting a nice, nice view of the action down below. I think we're going to rename that the Crash Molina Memorial Bridge. <laughs> now, they haven't gotten that through the City Fathers just yet, but it's Chris Barzinski in front of Super D, Dennis Miller. And it's Barzinski taking the checkered flag, a close race. And he's happy. He wins two of the three races here in Troy, Ohio. Super D with a little congratulatory gesture. But it's Dennis Miller who's going to reign as the national champion as Barzinski wins. And I believe we have Guillermo Novillo finishing third. And he's had an afternoon he'll talk about for quite some time. And Kevin Spiney Bedsworth grabbed the fourth spot, finishing fifth with Terry Chapman grabbing the sixth spot. Craig Throttleman Throssel. 
And now let's take a look at what happened overall in the meet. It's going to be a victory for Dennis Miller as he rounds out the year in hovercrafting in style, winning this final meet and taking the national championship, a 10-point victory over Guillermo Novillo, who's certainly an exciting racer and an eventful one to watch. Kevin Spiney Bedsworth and Novillo tying, and Chris Barzinski with two wins and a nothing. Interesting to see what would have happened if he'd been able to finish that second race. So what all this means in the national standings, number one, of course, Dennis Miller with 466 points. In second place, Kevin Bedsworth with 444, Guillermo Novillo with 408, and Ron Molina in fourth with 308. We'll be back after this. Well, we want to thank the great people of Troy, Ohio, for doing another outstanding job at hosting the Hover Club of America National Championship races. And our congratulations to Super D, Dennis Miller, for winning the national title. Undoubtedly, the man the drivers will shoot for next time around. But, Michael, these hovercraft are very versatile. They can do a lot more than just race. Absolutely, Dave. We've only seen the beginning. In the future, we're going to watch hovercraft do some amazingly versatile things. We're going to watch hovercraft traveling on frozen lakes. We're going to watch hovercraft perform daring rescues in places where hell helicopters can't get to. We're going to see all the incredible things hovercraft can do, like shoot the rapids, but going upstream. So we're going to visit lots of amazing, fun places. We're going to do some crazy things, and all in all, just have a great time together. Right now, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for joining us on Hover World. For Michael Wolf. I'm Dave Lamont. Guillermo.